So this is the $7,000 iMac Pro that I bought and I can't wait to unpack it. No, no, no. Good evening, Mitanon, and welcome back to another video. Don't worry, my iMac's fine. There was nothing in the box, as you can see. Yes, I'm crazy enough to buy a $7,000 iMac Pro. Do I regret it? Of course I do. I'm better off with a Windows XP. Now let me give you my honest opinion and why I bought it in the first place. Now this is the biggest investment I have ever made as a filmmaker. You're probably wondering, well, Bennett, why the hell would you spend so much money on a computer? Well, I have been using the iMac Pro for a couple of weeks now, and I must say that the performance takes my editing workflow to another level. It's a beast of a computer. So in this video, I won't dive too deep into the technical side of the iMac Pro, but what we will look at are the components, the performance, and the value you get for the iMac Pro. Like my old regular 27 inch iMac, the iMac Pro features a nice 5K display with accurate colors. In terms of connectivity, it has four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, which is powerful enough to connect two 5K displays at once. It has four USB 3 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and an SD slot. In terms of design, it has a space gray enclosure as well as the access bar that come with it. Also, the built-in speakers have a good sound quality with rich bass and more volume. Let's now talk about the performance. After doing some extensive research, I went with the iMac Pro model because that is the minimum spec I need for video editing. This might not be for you. It all depends on the footage you're editing. This is your decision to make. If you're a hobbyist, then this iMac Pro will definitely not be for you. Let me try to explain why I chose these configurations. The 10 core system offers a high turbo boost speed of 4.5 gigahertz that shortens rendering and exporting time. I would say 10 core is the sweet spot and because I do multicam edits and will be shooting raw in the near future, having more cores will definitely help render the video out better. If you don't have the money, eight core is fine for general editing. Let's talk about GPU. Effects and graphics tend to rely more heavily on GPU. I use Final Cut Pro X as my main editing software, which relies on CPU and GPU. Investing in the best GPU is a good choice if you want to render and export effects more quickly. This also includes rendering time, uh, retiming, scaling, stabilizing, color grading, all of that stuff. And because I use a lot of third-party plugins that come with effects, I went with the Rhodium Pro Vega 64X, which is currently the highest upgrade you can make for your iMac Pro. As for the RAM, I went with the 64 gigabytes because I do run multiple applications like Final Cut Pro X, YouTube, Pornhub, just joking, Pixelmator Pro and other applications. You don't really need more than 64 gigabytes. If you are on a budget, then get the 32 gigabyte, but keep in mind that unfortunately, unlike the iMac, which has a door on the back that makes upgrading RAM quick and easy, the iMac Pro model doesn't have one, which makes the upgrade process more complicated. The iMac Pro starts with one terabyte SSD. I left it that way, because I mostly edit off my GTEC drive that has eight terabyte of storage. I recommend uh, spending your money on a fast, bigger external storage like the one I have mentioned. If I could just upgrade one thing, I would go with the CPU. What would you go for? In the end, it all depends on the complexity of your project. Now to answer the question, is the price worth its value? I would say yes. You have to know that Macs hold their value pretty well and have a much higher resale value than a PC. I bought my iMac back in 2000, 
2015 or late 2015 for around $2,600. I actually quickly found someone that was willing to pay $1,400 for my iMac, which is in fact more than half the price, which is pretty good considering that my iMac is five years old. I think that people tend to keep their Macs longer. My girlfriend still has her Mac that she bought like seven years ago. Besides that it's slow, it still does its job and doesn't have any problems. That tells me that Apple designs their computers uh, very carefully. The main reason why I bought the iMac Pro is because I wanted something that is all in one and would last me for a longer period of time, at least five years. And as a filmmaker that does client work and edits videos weekly, having a faster editing workflow saves me so much time. I do shoot a lot in 4K and my videos can get really complex depending on the project. In order for me to edit smoothly, I require a computer that has a powerful processor and graphics card. It just saves me so much time being able to edit high quality videos fast, especially for client work where I have to meet deadlines. And this has been very challenging with my late 2015 iMac. When I started out, the iMac has been a great workstation for me, but as I got better over the years, and decided to do this professionally, I needed something more powerful. I started to notice how the iMac struggled uh, when I played a five minute 4K clip with effects and LUTs applied. It couldn't play the video back in real time. It just looked very choppy. I have been very patient with the iMac and used different strategies to boost the performance, but I realized that nothing worked and I just lost so much time messing around with my iMac. I simply wanted a computer that could work fast as I can so that I can put out videos as fast as possible. Without a doubt, buying the iMac Pro was the best solution. This is the most powerful Mac I have ever worked with and I have no doubts that this will serve me well in the future. The feeling is so different and being able to edit the footage smoothly is just amazing. Now I don't have to mess around with my computer and save time. And that was it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I answer all of them. Follow me on Instagram at Benegrazer. Subscribe to my channel to stay updated. We are soon reaching 1,000 subscribers, which is really awesome. Thank you so much. I'm gonna edit the new video now so that I will hopefully see you in the next video.